When there is an injustice against you or someone you love or someone you believe in, stand up. Don't sit down on them. You know, they need you. Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor, and I'm so excited to be here with Steph the Alter Nerd. It's Kim. The full crew is back. Oh, man, we're on, I'm under fire, guys. Oh, no, I'm under fire. What am I going to do? Uh, it's fine, man. I, I, I'm used to it. But I, uh, I'm excited to explain what's going on here, and I'm excited to talk about something Camila herself revealed, guys, because I'm not a doctor, and I don't share personal information, but I found it very interesting that uh, while I did acknowledge and was very transparent that I am looking into this massive Amber Stan, uh, that uh, she revealed something, guys, and I think it's a good conversation to have. Like, let's, regardless of what I'm doing, you know what I mean? Take that aside. Let's take Camilla's word today on what she says, which is that she's apparently admitted to being an extremely young girl. Now, this is Camila herself, right, guys, on Twitter, acknowledging this. That alone has already, to me, blown up what Cat 10 Barge and so many media outlets were doing in legitimizing this girl. And, and to me, it, it, it opened so many weird ethical questions and things that I wanted to take some time to talk about it with Steph, with Kim, uh, because we do have a little bit more intel. Now, look, uh, full disclosure. I'm, I, I can't believe I have to keep saying this. There's, like, just idiots out there trying to now, like, I guess... We got the cloud again, Steph. I'm back. They're, the hate streams are coming back. Uh, I tried to this imply that I'm out there trying to dock stamps. First of all, I'm, I'm, I'm investigating one person, and I'm specifically investigating one person because that person pursued legal action against a friend of mine because they this reporter apparently declared that Camilla wasn't who someone said she was. I didn't really think there was any they did enough homework on that. They didn't do enough research. So I did look around to see, is there a way to do more research to find out? I'm doing that personally. I've never declared that I'm going to reveal personal details. I don't know how many more times I got to say it. Anybody out there who's saying I'm doing that is just like clickbaiting you and lying because I, even a few people I've talked to and said, I'm sorry if there's a miscommunication. I haven't shown me where I've docked somebody or I'm saying I'm gonna because guys, I'm not gonna. So any donations you think I'm, you're not going to get the identity of a rando that I find if it comes down to who that person is. What I said is if this person actually is lying and is the person at Amber's PR firm, well then I, yeah, I think that's worthy of putting out there because that's like a level of corruption and just, just it's, it's, it's that's a problem for me. So I, yes, I would do that. But if this turns out, my research turns out that this person's someone else, I'm not going to tell you who it is. I'll tell you if they're who they say they are. I'll tell you if she's a woman, if she's a girl, if she black, all these things that she keeps declaring. I find it, I think it would be interesting. And I think you guys would agree. Is she being honest or is this all a scam? And the only reason I put a spotlight on Camila specifically is because of her association with NBC News and all the other reporters that have engaged with her. Now, I want to, Kim and Steph, before we get into more, uh, again, full disclosure, I have spoken to Camila or whoever is Camila. We're calling this person Camila because that's how they identify on Twitter. I, I have a little bit more intel that I'm currently vetting, but I'm going to put all that aside. I DM'd with Camila. I'm not putting out the DMs unless she gives me permission or unless there's something that I have to sort of disprove because there's now allegations against me. However, I did have a conversation. And in that conversation, she revealed something to me that I wasn't going to put out there until she did. Well, she did. She revealed that she is an extremely young girl. And yes, she told me this as well. Now, Steph, Kim have access sometimes to my DMs. If you reach out, just be aware. The three of us may read them, okay? And they did read them. Now, guys, I want to be very clear. I have no interest in putting out her DMs. I have no interest. That's not what I do. However, now that she revealed this part of her, you guys saw that portion as well. And we have some comments to offer about it because I think it's important. Is she telling the truth? And even if she is, it just opens up a whole can of worms of why is Cat 10 Barge declaring her this black woman survivor of inner partner V? Like, I have so many questions. So uh, that's sort of the uh, top line of what we're going to talk about today, along with Dan Wooten is getting his karma today. Oh, my God. Can't wait to talk about that uh, and so much more as we hang out with you guys. So thank you for all the support. So many of you guys have been supporting 
uh, the investigation. I appreciate it. I, I want to be clear, I guess, just because there's a lot of idiots out there or not. Your funds are not going to get the identity of this person. I will not dox anybody. I have no interest in doing that ever. I've never done it, nor would I ever. That's not what this is about. People aren't watching the video fully or reading my thread. This is about exposing the media. Kat Tenbarge, as an example, is an NBC journalist who vetted this troll and then confidently said, Lara, the real Lara B was not only a liar, not only a racist, but uh, was out there spreading misinformation and, and, and all this stuff. It's it's maddening. How did she know? Did she speak to Camila? Did she actually get some sort of conf journalist conf confirmation? No, she didn't. <laughs> She didn't. So this is super messed up in my point of view. And I think it's really dangerous for an NBC news organization to do it. That's what this investigation is about. I'd like to prove, did NBC step up and confirm the wrong person? Should they have confirmed this person? Hashtag stay tuned. And my God, wait for the report before you guys keep thinking I'm doing something I'm not. Uh, Steph and Kim, uh, I got it all out. That's where we're headed. I want to go to you, Steph, first. What is your reaction to all the sort of the chaos out there? And also this real revelation that Camila admitted herself, now, now that you've read the conversation, that she's an extremely young girl. Um, firstly, let's put it out there. I really, really do not think that, in my opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever, Camila is a young girl, a minor whatever she is going to call herself in regards to her age. Really don't believe that. Um, she has not provided any evidence to be able to suggest that that is actually the case. Actually, on the contrary, um, everything is more geared towards the Camilla. In terms of, you know, what she's putting out there on Twitter is an adult. I mean, let's not forget one of her tweets. She turns around and she says that uh, YouTube, got to be careful what I say here, but she has experience with uh, IPV. Well, she's an extremely young girl. I just wonder how an extremely young girl would have experience with IPV. There's a lot of things that don't make sense in terms of the output that you see on Twitter from Camilla to the notion that she's a young little girl. No way, no how. Um, do you want me, Andy, do you want to leave it until later on for me to go into a little bit of my analysis that I did? Yeah, uh, let's, or... so, so yes, teasing the analysis of, of, yeah. of, of fact-checking this in a way because like, it's, it's complicated. I, I had talked to Steph and Kim before, like, I don't want to share private things that aren't out there. To me, this is now fair game because I don't want to report on someone if they're a minor, right? I don't want to do that and get in trouble. That that makes things complicated. And so they they had they had access and they got to read the exchange just to sort of help advise me of like, is she tricking us? Is this real? Do you believe her? What's going on? And the only reason I'm revealing it is because she revealed it. Okay, guys. So that's I just I'm not going to show you the DMs. We're not going to get to, to scroll through them. But I think it's important because I, I don't want to be out there harassing a minor. Like, that's clearly not my intent. But, uh, Kim, I want to go to you because I know you're very rational, too. Uh, to me, this plays like a tactic to, hey, back off. I'm a minor. It's a, it's a scary place that now when some pressure has been applied, seemingly, of like, uh oh, someone someone's looking into me and my lies uh, to suddenly throw that card out of nowhere. It, does it does it give you a question mark? Absolutely. Um, I think the biggest question mark I have right now is if we're going to take what uh, Camilla is saying as truth, because I, I do have myself have doubts that she is an extremely young girl, but I'm going to put those doubts to the side and let's take Camilla at her word for a few minutes and assume that she is an extremely young girl. At that point, I start to wonder why is she considered a source then? on ipv because i mean even if we think back to the trial like let's go back to the trial what this is all actually kind of really about when um their ipv expert when amber's ipv expert was brought in um I, i'm having a mind fart i can't remember his name right now the guy um you know his whole his justification of being an ipv ex expert was actually 
you know, challenged because they didn't believe that even he had enough for Teach to be considered an expert. But here we are over at NBC taking an extremely young girl potentially as an expert and using her content as sources for an article. And I heard about the ethical ramifications of that um, for NBC and the reporting, because I, I would assume that when you have someone underage being used in an article, that there would have to be things like parental consent or other things of that nature. And I, I just have a lot of questions about why, why Camilla? Why did NBC decide to choose Camilla? Because I don't really think that that's fair to her in a weird way. It's just, yeah. there's so much kind of mm, with this that makes me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and as, uh, and I mean, I'm not, I think as, as you said, Andy, we're not here to dox anybody. It's not the point. We wanted to see if it was possible that NBC was working with Amber's PR team, which would be unethical in journalism. That's the story. And now we've gone down this route where we're finding out that someone that they have been asking for information from or using in their articles is a child. Well, and, and, the and biggest, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. Allegedly. Well, that's th and, and not not just that, like Kat completely defames Laura. Like when you go through this mm -hmm. article, and I want to be careful, like, like literally just declares her a liar. A pro mm -hmm. Johnny Depp YouTuber spreading lies and conspiracy theories. Like this is a journalist now, right? Not just some person online in a blog post on NBC News declaring that Laura's spreading lies and conspiracy theories. Based off what? Kat, what What if you're wrong, right? And then you put this out there. And then not only does, it, does they go on and just completely try to, to, to wreck Laura, which again, I, I, I don't know if Kat is Camila. I'm not trying to say that right now. The truth is, I don't think any of us can prove whether she is or not. Kat, I mean, uh, Camilla could be me, could be you, you know, it's like, it, it's, it's sort of really hard to prove who it is, but you know, there are ways to sort of track, you know, who set up the account. There are ways to do it. And I'm trying to do my best. And again, even that's going to have a speculation warning. And it's why I'm not going to release the person's name specifically, because I don't want to give you details to harass this other person. Um, you know, cause who knows, maybe sh there, there are still ways that it could be a little slightly off. Uh, I'm going to stay tuned for that report. I will explain it all and we'll, I'll be very careful and I'm going to do it at a certain point, but I'm trying to do a little bit more due diligence just to protect everybody before I go there. But I feel confident in telling you, I don't think it's the same person, but I still haven't been able to confirm whether they're working with Shane PR. That's what I'm still on, on hold, trying to follow some, some leads and sources to confirm whether they did just full disclosure with you guys. And that's, that's the big, that's the real big question. Cause I agree with you. It's like, there's something extremely unethical if they're hiding these, these Stan accounts. And that's why I'm getting bothered by so many people who are sort of siding with Amber accounts to try and vilify us, the channel as we're, we're doxing herd supporters. This has nothing to do with that. I don't care about a Stan account supporting Amber. These do whatever you want. This is a person that was levitated up by real journalists as a legit source and also labeled a victim and a black female woman victim using these terms to, to make Laura seem racist and a, and a body like an awful person put using all these terms and, Oh, she was a victim of IPV and stock. Like, how do you know this cat? We're at a place where the media literally is now taking troll accounts on Twitter to use as, Oh, well that, that vets it. That's proof. This is scary times. So yeah, I want to know if the news is being honest or not. That's what I'm doing right now. I'd like to confirm that for myself and bring you as much as I can to confirm whether that's true or not. And that's what we're working on. So just everyone's yeah. clear to anybody out there trying to say I'm doxing stands. They're, they're being, they're just clickbait lying to you because I don't know how many more times I'm, I can say it. I'm done defending it. There's nothing to defend. That's what's happening. But yeah, to, to get, to go back to it, Kim, like the IPV thing really bothers me. Because if that's not true, it's a whole nother level of effed up, right? It's yeah. just exactly what Amber did. I feel like this whole thing of pretending to be this victim and offend all these real victims and what that does for survivors in our community. But on top of that, now the stands doing it. And then we, we were like, oh, well, this is an IPV, which to me should be more grown up, more adult experience with spouses or serious relationships. But then we get this tweet and I'm like, well, how young? 
What does that yeah. mean you're an extremely young girl? Like, so if we take it for a moment and say this is the uh, this is true, Cat 10 Barge has given a young girl the 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 expertise as an IPV victim. And then not only that, but a court reporter? I don't mean to disparage the young guys, but does anyone else on this panel have a problem with that? Uh, I I think this is part of the issue here, and I think it's right here. It's a, it's a larger, bigger issue, and it's that when we all started covering the Johnny Depp trial, they're like on YouTube, I'm going to say us as in YouTubers, right? Yeah. There seemed to be this like dialogue that it was like, you can't trust YouTubers to tell you what's happening. You have to trust the mainstream media. That came out in full force. And then there was this dialogue back from a lot of the audience saying, no, we don't trust you, mainstream media. We're going to trust YouTubers because they're actually showing us what really happened. And they're having different opinions. And, you know, there were other legal experts weighing in and all that other type of stuff. And then we're dealing with the fallout of this trial. This trial ended in June and we're still talking about it. But my point being that now we look at stuff like this and it's like mainstream media. This is why people don't trust you. And then when we're trying to call it out and make sense of it, we're the bad guys. It's just a little kind of, it's going in a circle and it's weird. All right. So Steph, let's, because let's, let's talk about it. So if, if, if we were to take her for her word and she's a young girl, to me, Katz now already looks like an, a fool um, right out the gate. So this is problematic for Kat, regardless of what my research will reveal or whatever we, I, I tell you about that as we get there. And again, the reason I'm not trying to stall or stretch it, I just want to protect myself and the people in it. It's not so easy, but I, I'm glad I've put some, I've, I've been transparent with you guys because it's brought out more of this information, which is good to, to understand because this isn't just a Stan account. I don't believe this is just a Stan account. This is a, this person has a motive person is involved in ways that I genuinely believe this is not a conspiracy theory it was lifted up. I think there was false engagement. This was used in a way to become a culture war. And I'm so sick of the media being able to do that. It's time to expose those tactics and figure out what's actually going on. Um, but Steph, she's saying she's an extremely young girl. You, you actually got to see some exchanges where Camila did tell me this in, in our, in our conversation. Do you believe her? No. Why don't you believe her? So before I go into it, just to give you my background, uh, I have a degree in international relations and security studies. Uh, part of my degree was in conflict resolution, um, you know, the use of language, the analysis of language to resolve conflict, all that lot. So with that out of the way... I did a very, very basic mini like linguistic analysis. And what I did was I picked out phrases upon which this Camilla described herself as being young. So three that I picked out. Um, firstly, I'm a minor. Have you ever heard a teenager or a child describe themselves as a minor. It's very clinical, that kind of terminology, very police, procedural, that kind of thing. Now, by using the word minor, what she's doing is she's avoiding saying that she's a little girl, i.e., you would have thought she'd turn around and say, dude, I'm a little girl. I'm a girl. Or, or I'm hell? 12 or I'm 14. You'd say That's the age. That's right. That's right. So by using the term I'm a minor, what she's doing there is she's what this indicates is that she's using what's called distancing language. Now, what is that? So it's a type of language where the author of the statement, i.e. in this case, let's say Camilla, is distancing themselves from what they're saying. Uh in a nutshell, um, distancing language can be used to separate themselves from even an idea, a topic, or in this case, with Camilla, their own identity. And the purpose of using what's known as distancing language is mainly to either self-deceive or deceive others and can be used to actually identify if the author of that statement is lying. So when we look at the first example, 
I'm a minor, well, that's using distancing language because she's not actually turning around and saying, I'm a little girl. I am 14 years old. What are you and, doing? And dude? she's using it. She's clearly using a term to try and scare me. Don't you get that vibe as well? Correct, because when you're using the word such as minor, again, it's very clinical. It's very police procedural terminology, right? It's like, hey, up, you're, again, YouTube, you're messing with a minor. Like, that's like, oh, my goodness, right? Your back goes up straight away because it's a level of language that you would uh, refer to when like the police are using it or an authority is using it, something along those lines, right? So by using that, instead of her turning around and saying, I'm a little girl, that's distancing language. There's two others that I just picked out. The next one is you are targeting a young girl on Twitter now. Even though she uses here the term young girl, young girl, it's the context of how she's used this that's actually suspect in this particular sentence. So this is because she's talking about herself here in the third person. Again, that's distancing language because if she's a child and she's talking about herself, then I would have expected her to naturally say something along the lines of, guess what? I am X amount years old, uh, little girl that you're targeting on Twitter. I'm a girl, little girl, you're targeting on Twitter. I'm 12 years old, girl, targeting, you're targeting on Twitter. What the deuce? So this then transforms the statement where she'd then be speaking in the first person, owing, owning her identity as a little girl, but she doesn't do that. She speaks in the third person. You're targeting a young girl on Twitter, not a hey, up. I'm 11 year old girl, you're targeting me on Twitter. There's a very subtle difference. And by talking in the third person, again, using distancing language, which if we go back to why do people use distancing language? It's usually to self-deceive or deceive others. and could be used to identify if the author is lying or not. The third example, many people my age have Stan accounts. The distance in language here in this sentence is the use of the word people. She's distancing herself from the truth of whether she's a child or not by using the umbrella term of people, guys, in this sentence. If she's a girl, then naturally she should have said something along the lines of, you know what, many girls my age have stan accounts. But she doesn't. She doesn't use the word girls. She doesn't say, look, many children my age have stan accounts. No, she uses the word people, which again is distancing language, which is mainly used to either self-deceive or deceive others and can be used to identify if the author of that statement is lying or not. Now, again, bear in mind, opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever, do not treat what I've just said there as fact. I did a very, very mini, mini linguistic analysis on that. It was like a two second thing. But just picking out those things pretty easily. Like, that's just red flags all over. Um, does that all make sense? I know I've no, it does. really and, and it, technical I, I'm so, there, but... I'm, I'm glad I could have a second opinion on it because it was, you know, as I was engaging, and I don't, I, we don't have to get into specifics of it, uh, of any personal information in it, but it, it, it just felt like they were, they were trying to scare me. You know what I mean? It yeah. just felt like they were trying to come after me. How dare I, da-da-da. And, you know, it's a tough spot to be in because it's like, well, I, if that's true, I, I, you know, then that's that's awful. But you're also lying um, and more. Uh, but just I just could I didn't believe a word she said. <laughs> and I said as much. I, I can tell you what I said. I said as much to her as we was we talked. And I, I was trying to find a way. Well, is there a way we can prove this? And I, I want to be clear. And, I, and I, I made an offer of just like, look, if, if she and I could work it out privately, and she wants to reveal and, and sort of confirm or whatever that I will, I told her we can end all this. I was like, there's toxicity in all of like the fandoms. Why you are a person who's has such an opportunity to end this. Like, can we try to end this is really what I would love to do. And so if Camila, you're watching the offer still stands. I'd love to end all of this and try to finally get some truth. Even if you aren't who you say you are, let's, let's try to like, squash it all you know what i mean like that's what it really should be about um and uh i, I wish we could get to that point and, and I, but the sad reality is there's 
crazy people on both sides, the Johnny side, the Amber side, who take it too far a lot. And I believe she has. And I believe she has to take accountability for that because she did do say terrible things to a lot of people and encouraged awful behavior to tug and so many others. Uh, and I, I got I got umbrage with that. So that, that that's part of it. Um, but please, people, I, I got to say it always leave them alone. Please don't be don't give them the ammo to make Johnny Depp supporters look crazy. It is not helpful. And it's why I would never want to put the information out there because no offense, I can't trust all of you. <laughs> Some of y'all are crazy. It is true on both sides of the coin. Uh, Kim, any any offers or, or things you wanted to offer about this topic before we pivot? I just, I find the whole situation very concerning. If we are going to take Camilla at her word that she's a young child, that she's a young girl, I don't understand why she is being used as a source in mainstream media outlet um, for IPV, but you know, that's just my question. And you don't, I, we're not here to dock. We don't want to reveal who this person is, if they are a minor or, you know, if they're not affiliated with chain communications, that's always been the question. Um, and I, I think this is a part of us holding mainstream media accountable for the information that they're giving, though we need to know that the information that when we read a news article that it is factual and that it's not just, I'm sorry, this is my opinion. I look at this and I go, is this just you guys trying to find someone that will say what it is that you want people to say to fit a narrative or is it truth? And that's kind of my question. Yeah, and to, 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 to go there a bit, so... Here's the sort of excuse, which to me, again, I think this was to try to scare me. And I don't want to be scared. No, you're not going to scare me off. This is, again, this just tells me I'm, we're on to something. There's definitely something suspicious and crooked going on here. And it's kind of troubling to me to see Johnny fans and other people trying to like, Andy, what stop this? No, no, I'm not. Personally, I'm not. Uh, uh, once I uncover what I uncover, then I will deduce what's able to be shared publicly. Uh, and it's not going to be any personal information. But there's something off here, guys. Our instincts were correct. And the connection to Kat is is sinister in my eyes. It's completely reprehensible. I, I just I don't understand how she was so quick to throw Lara under the bus in a legitimate article like this. It's shocking. And I don't understand what, I don't know the legal, you know, there was, they threatened legal, the, the person at Champion PR threatened legal action. I don't know what's going on with that. I haven't heard, talked to Laura about that. It's on my business. I'll let Laura fill you in. If, if there's anything, uh, go tune into Laura, but it's just, it's something seems off. Something seems off here. And I don't see how Laura said anything that warrants a lawsuit. There's there's nothing. She asked a question. And in my view, she asked a legitimate question. It's a legitimate question that we were all thinking, which if you haven't read the thread, I did a video on it this morning. Go read the thread. Go do it. But I'm going there again. This is what she said. Just curious. This you, Camila? Now, again, what's so frustrating is they made her, a, they labeled her a racist because Camila had a black person, uh, an animated black avatar, like a profile picture. And then I guess the, the people who made it race, like made it about race to me are the actual racists in this example, because the reason Lara picked this person is because she was listed as the spokesman for herd <laughs> in numerous articles. And they don't want you to know that part. Kat doesn't want you to know that part. And Shane communications wants to make it about, Oh, th th there's like a whole line here of, we are hard pressed to understand why you think Miss White is Camille. Is it both? Is it because both women are African American? Like what? What? What a stretch! Like, are you kidding? This is how desperate they are. This is how much they'll lie. They'll call her a racist. This is effed up to protect a Stan account who's calling herself extremely young. What? What the hell is happening? <laughs> no, I'm not going to stop. There's clearly something going on here, guys. And it's super messed up. I mean, guys, how effed up is this quote in in, in Kat's article? We are hard pressed to understand why you think Miss White is Camille. Is it because they're both African American? Like, can you believe that? How about it's because she's heard spokesman in the media? How disgusting is that? Steph, do you want to comment? Um, what? The thing is, right, what they're doing there is they're throwing back ad hominem attacks to the real Laura B. And what that means is that uh, instead of them turning around and saying, well, hang on a minute, the real Laura B, you are wrong. 
this is why. Here's the evidence. Here's the receipts. No. They don't do that, right? What they do instead is what's called an ad hominem attack, which means that they're just going to go attack your character instead, which to me, I think is the lowest form of debate, right? And so instead they turn around and they make it about this and then they insinuate, my opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever, the the real Laura B is ist because she asked a question, Camilla, is this you? Like what? They they didn't respond back saying, no, you are wrong and this is why. It's like smoke and mirrors. And we need to actually ask, well, hang on a minute. Why haven't you actually, Shea Communications, turned around and said why the real Laura B um, is wrong in asking that question? Why it's not this lady here that's Camilla? You could well, squash and, it and, right and, now. You could end it right now by saying why, by giving and, the and, evidence. But just to add it, because I want to forget it, but like, even if this woman, and I don't think this woman is her personally, I, I don't know, but it could be. But my point is like, even Shane Communications, whatever, they, like even if they ask her, she could lie. Like there's no way for them to prove what she does in her off time. So it's like, how can any of them be so confident? Like you can say on the record, well, she's denying it. And I guess she's trying to pursue legal action for defamation. But honestly, I, I, if, if that's true and she does it, I hope Laura takes it all the way so we can then really figure out, well, all right, well, who is it? It'll be interesting to see if they do it. It is like a loud barking dog and that can be pricey and annoying. Uh, so send your support over to Laura. Uh, so she can, I don't know she, I, if they'd come after her, she can rally up the troops and, and do it because this, this seems like bullying tactics. No Steph. Totally. It does. Mm. And the fact of the matter is, do you know what? Real Laura B could take them. Don't get me wrong. And I hope they do try and take it all the way with Real Laura B because do you know what? Or to be a fly on that wall when Real Laura B gets discovery. Because then at that point, Shane Communications have shot themselves in the foot, in my opinion, conspiracy theory or whatever, because then they would have to present all their evidence as to either whether this lady is Camilla or not, or she isn't. I also present all the information they've got potentially in regards to any links they may or may not have with the Twitter account known as Camilla. So for me, what Shane Communications are doing is just a scare tactic with Real Laura B. Um, I think they'll be absolute fools to really go after her because then Real Law B can ask for all the information she wants as part of the discovery and they would have to comply and then they've shot themselves in the foot then. So, <laughs> yeah, go for it, share communications. I'm just being clear. We're, this is whole episode is an opinion-based speculation. We're all, we're all, we don't know. We don't know. Mm. And I, yes, I have some information that I'm gathering, but I, I don't, I'm not going to tell you it's 100% yet. That's why we're, I'm not giving it to you. When it's ready to give it out there, I'll tell you how confident we are and, what, and whatever details I can share with you. But I want to be very clear. We, we, we don't know. And that's the problem. I'd like to try to figure it out or someone just actually come forward and be honest. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, Steph. So, so moving forward on all this, yeah. uh, other thoughts to add? Um, other thoughts to add is that in terms of, you know, your actual conversation with Camilla, um, yeah. Um, all scare tactics um, and it's interesting how they are or she is whoever is using buzzwords let's call them buzzwords to try and scare this channel into submission not happening guess what you ever heard of investigative journalism <laughs> like that's what we're doing with this story. Investigative journalism. You know what that is? You actually research a story, get all the facts, and then determine at that point what to release and what's safe to release and what's legal to release. We're not here to dox anyone. That's not the point of this. We're, like Andy said earlier on, you know, we're here to protect everyone, including freaking Camilla. Right? Yeah. 
including Camilla. And that's something I think that we need to be very, very explicit in saying, right? Because do you know what? With whatever Andy's got, right? He could just release it now. I mean... And I didn't. He's al- <laughs> exactly. He's eluded. I don't know the full lot. And this is me we're talking about here, right? I don't know the full lot. But at the end of the day, he could release what he's got, right? And and make a shiz ton of views, right? But he's not done that. Why? First, he's got integrity. And B, he's here to try and protect everyone involved in this story. Again, including Camilla. So anyone that's got it twisted out there saying that, oh, Andy's DOXing this, that, and the other. Firstly, he hasn't. So wind your neck back in, you dumb asses. And secondly, he ain't going to do that. <laughs> because, I'm not going to uh, do that. I have no interest in doing yeah, that. That's, that's, <laughs> it's that's, not going to happen on this channel. That's not going to happen. Uh, if, if I've heard right, it's illegal. It, it's not really, yeah, you I don't, know, I don't want to do anything illegal. <laughs> do. I'm not going to do it. So you really, really think that Andy on his channel is going to absolutely put his livelihood, put his family at risk for a stupid freaking Amberstan account? Guys, get yourself back to reality. We'll welcome you with open arms pretty much. Like, come on. Come back down from crazy town because that's just not. That's insane. Yeah, no, I, I just, I'll say it myself. She's, she, I agree with everything she just said. I wouldn't do it. I have no interest in doing that. I'm especially not going to risk anything to do any of that. I, but I, I do want the truth. And it's like, I want to make sure we understand what's going on. And I don't like, I don't, there's, there is sneakiness happening here. Corruption happening here, in my opinion, my conspiracy theory, my whatever. It's not okay. And the information I have gotten was troubling. I'll be honest. The information I've gotten is troubling, but in getting that information, I got to figure out exactly as Steph said, how, how do I disperse the information without, you know, putting anybody at risk? That was never the goal. Those are the generalities I'm speaking of, of there's certain things when I do, if and when I can finally bring you this report, uh, you know, hopefully we'll, as we get more, if anybody else has information to share, uh, as we get there, you'll, You'll I I ex- I want you to know some things without knowing any personal things that could put this person at risk. That's what we're working on. And 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 the, when I said just to clarify, like when I, I think there was a throwaway line that people are trying to spit at me. If well, we could look up donate more, and we could look up other accounts. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I'd love to see if Cocaine Cross is is Camila because I believe they are. That's the information I want, not their their address and their social out in the world. I want to know, are they the same person? Do they, did the same person register for both those accounts? I've, I th- I'd find that information pretty useful. You know what I mean? So that that's what I'm referring to. Is this a network of P? That's what's so troubling. Is this is just a Stan account? Is Camilla actually what she says she is and is just some kid out there and a Stan account? In which case, if, if that's the data I have, wouldn't be doing this guys <laughs> first of all second of all i i just i don't buy, i don't buy it i don't buy it and then i'm like well are these like accounts that were paid are these accounts that are working together there's legitimate information here because we're not crazy like where did these accounts come from in the virality it's like it makes total sense for them to have worked with Amber's PR team, with a co- with potential companies like Bot Sentinel, who have experience doing such types of things. Again, speculating here totally, not accusing any of those people, but to, to be labeled a conspiracy theorist when she literally only two things she seems to be paying for are Bot Sentinel and Shane PR. It is not a conspiracy theory, and so when someone's telling you it's a conspiracy theory, chances are they're trying to deflect and scare you away to not keep going. So, um. I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to back down. And if I thought I was putting anyone actually in jeopardy, I would tell you, I would stop and I would be very transparent. That's why I wanted to let you guys in as this was happening, because I've had some misinformation before she even pushed her account out when I was doing this investigation, because I had heard the rumor about Christina and um, Camila before Laura put it out there. And I wanted to sort of do my own due diligence to see what was going on. Um, so this has been an ongoing thing that I've I've held on to a lot of intel, and I will. Sorry, guys, hate me or not, I'm not putting it out there until I feel confident. Okay, we can put it out in this version, and we're safe. Everybody's safe. So so hold on your hats, get ready. It might be a little bit, or it might be tomorrow. Who knows? 
but uh, I'm still working on it and stay tuned as we get there. But I I'm just troubled because judging by what she's now saying, isn't this reason alone that Kat should be concerned, Kim? Like this is troubling, as you sort of said, to bring it back to the story at hand. This is troubling that an NBC journalist is out there being besties and lifting up this this person who's a potential minor. Like, does Kat have permission from her parents? Do you know what I mean, Kim? Do her parents know? Right. Right. Like, and this, I just, and that's part of where it goes down this rabbit hole is that if, if what Camilla is saying is true, I truly, truly do not wish any ill will on her. And I don't want anybody doxing her. And I don't want anything happening to her because she's a child. But why did the grownups in the situation, such as Kat, bring her into this? Those are my questions. I don't feel like it's, it's fair to her at that point if that is the case and i don't feel like it's ethical journalism that's my opinion i could be very wrong i don't know what the nbc code of ethics is i don't know what their code for reporters is of what they expect i know other ethical guidelines for journalism other foundations and such that tend to put out the ethics that journalism's journalism professionals follow that reporters follow do say that parental consent needs to be a that these these kids need to be protected and i just i'm not seeing that and that concerns me yeah it's concerning because again to, to lift up this person and i guess in my thread i have more of the examples but um again to use the person's blackness their survivorship it's like it's all really intense and to just be duped and do it on because you want to have an amber narrative that's pro I mean, it's so gross because even like the article sort of says that like uh, <laughs> some YouTube creators amount to something really weird. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. I wanted to get to a part. Uh, da, 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 protect her. It's sort of a, a new wave of Amber supporters as the trial has died down is sort of how she sort of tries to say it. Um, it's like as if like, you know, this is a, a real thing. Oh, here it is. Depp's... Uh, Camila's Twitter account has more than 20,000 followers posted viral tweets and threads in support of her and asking the public to reevaluate the narrative Depp's team and supporters pushed during the trial. Her posts have contributed to the growing online movement in defense of Heard. And then you, I mean, if you click there, uh, oh yeah, the new online documents, which literally was nothing. There was literally nothing in this. This is the new online movement. Uh, another cat article where she's basically saying, ooh, new articles reveal things you didn't know. Guys, anybody who follows the trials knows that's a complete lie. There was nothing new in those documents that exposed really either of them. If I mean, It was slightly more, I would say, in Johnny's favor than Amber, but I would say it was kind of a wash. There was really much interesting at all in those pieces, but that's how Kat is doing it, pushing this whole pro-Amber narrative, and it makes me wonder why. Like, is NBC making her do this? Like, is this more nefarious than even I'm willing to consider? Like, do you think Kat's editor is out there like, we need another anti-Johnny uh, piece. Get on it right now. Like, do you think that's happening, Steph? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. <laughs> because this is a PR media war that's going on right now. And make no mistake about it, it is war. And they started it. <laughs> they started it by peddling this nonsense narrative that Amber Heard is the survivor when you, if you just look at the facts alone, she lost. Johnny Depp won every single point. She won one, and that one even against really Johnny Depp. It was because of what Adam Waldman tweeted. And the media and Kat are still peddling this. Well, she's a survivor, this, that, and the other. Well, public don't agree. Courts don't agree. Joe freaking blogs don't freaking agree, right? So this whole thing is all geared towards trying to, uh, in, in, in this war uh, situation we're in at the moment, grinding us down grinding us down to submission now the strongest of us ain't gonna happen because we know what's what this that and the other it's the public out there that doesn't know absolutely everything but are on team johnny at the moment 
And it's quite a large uh, population out there that's like that. They were able to grind them down and be like, oh, well, you know what? I'm seeing it a lot more in the media that, you know, Johnny Depp's evil and Amber Heard's great. They sat on the over. Hearts and minds changing theirs. And then they've got more people on their side for when this appeal comes around. Because their end game, guys, is this appeal. So let's not lose sight of it. It's all building up, trying to build up this momentum in the media for Team Amber Heard because the build-up before was Team Johnny Depp. They're trying to reverse it for the um, uh, the uh, appeal. We can't let that happen. So we've got to continue fighting no matter what. And this is war. Make no mistake about it. And we need to still continue to fight for Johnny. Simple yeah, as. Well said. I feel like a lot of people sort of moved on. He won, it's over, and they do it, but the they are the Amber army seems to be out there. At the same time, I don't know, I, I feel like they're getting tired. I do feel like the, the, she's running out of money on the pro support because it never made sense, all the support out there and these weird stories. Like, we watched the trial. It wasn't about standing Johnny or Amber. It was about the evidence that was presented in the trial. Um, and even the evidence not presented in trial still weighed way more towards Johnny than it did Amber. There's audio tape where the doctor admits that she did it and doesn't acknowledge any of her injuries from said event. I mean, there's so much stuff. I just, I don't understand what there even is still an argument about, but there is. Uh, Kim, any, any thoughts you want to add? No, I, I think we summed it up, all of it. I think the only thing I will say is just echoing again. Please do not harass people. Yes. We're here to dox anybody. We want the truth yeah. about what's going on with the mainstream media reporting. And I, I feel like some words that are being said are being twisted. And it, it that's not the intention. And I don't know how much clearer Andy can be or how much clearer we can be. But, you know, people are going to say what they're going to say. It's disappointing, but it is what it is. And, you know, we're I, I know Andy's doing his best to do things legally and properly and to the best of his ability to find truth. That's all that is. Yeah, look, I have no interest in going to find a bunch of Stan accounts information and troll them. That's not what this is about. This is about are they connected to this and why and, and particular with Camila, I think and I think cocaine cross is the other one. If I were to look up two, it would be those two because Camila lifted them both up as the authorities on this case the ones that we should listen to literally a person named cocaine cross. Uh, it's like, it's, it's just bizarre to me um, that that's uh, what she's been so focused on. Um, do I have that? Uh, it was, yeah. Two of the biggest people who had the most impact are cocaine cross and Camilla both create threads that distill important intel in the court docs, testimony, social media, which is how the pro dep creators amassed widespread support. Oh, that's why you mean, or how about because we had, the evidence on, her, on his favor. The only reason I did this whole case is because I heard the audio tape. I, I don't know how Kat didn't listen to the audio tapes that damningly proved Amber was not being honest. And right out there, it was like, all right, well, now I got to really pay attention to all this. If you went in just to believing one person over the other, that was your problem. And it seems like Amber supporters go in believing all women, and that's what happened. But to, to wrap it up on my end, there's one other thing I want to show, which is I, I tweeted out about it as well. But I mean, just the nefariousness of Kat. I'm sorry, but uh, look at this, 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 what she sent Laura. Like I can't, now this tweet, I got to give props out to, uh, I don't know, DM me if you want me to give you credit. I don't know if you wanted me to give you credit, sir, but thank you, sir. Uh, if you message me quick, I'll give you credit before I'm done. I'm sure you're watching. Uh, but to uh, Mr. <laughs> or sorry, doctor, doctor, thank you. Uh, doctor was able to uh, basically pull, there are for journalists, there are uh, like way back machines that save everything, okay? And in doing so, uh, uh, this doctor uncovered, Kat sent out a tweet that she later deleted quickly. Lara Baca, uh, hi, Lara. Since you refer to yourself as a journalist, when can we expect to see you delete this thread, including harassment against a black woman based on false claims you made up with no evidence? I look forward to your official retraction. <laughs> well, I made sure to send that right back at her. Hey, Kat. Hi, it's me, Andy. Hey, uh, since you refer yourself as a journalist, when can we expect you to retract your hit piece defending and doxing this now kid, Camila, uh, as a black woman survivor to instead dox and defame 
real Lara B without any evidence or confirming who Camila was. Uh, curious when you're going to retract that article. Please let us know. You can DM me anytime to join the show. But yeah, it'd be really nice. Hi. Hey, I hope you I hope you do it. Oh, the condescension of this woman. She's just the worst. Uh, but right back at you, Kat. Right back at you. Uh, it's just not okay to try to go out there and cancel and uh, force attractions and things. Like, How did she know? How could she confirm and stand for someone like that who she didn't even speak to. Can you imagine, Kim, if you're like a journalist and then literally all you've done is DM the person and you're basically trusting an anonymous typing at the end in the age of catfish, you're just acknowledging and accepting the words that are being typed to you from a avatar that isn't even a real person. And then you're going to go write in an NBC News article that this person isn't that person. Can you imagine that? No. <laughs> I just <laughs> No, because I mean, all right, like I, I, I have to watch my words carefully here. I, you know, uh, since I have been, you know, working alongside you guys and, and, you know, being a part of a conversation surrounding sometimes exclusives we have or people that, that come on the show. I mean, there's definitely a vetting process. There was even a vetting process for me becoming a, a member of the headline crew to talk to people. And he had to know I was a real person and we had to go through that whole thing. So to me, it's just very odd that, that you know, if, 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 Camilla is, if Camilla is a child, that that was not something that was, you know, disclosed through the vetting process. Yeah, I don't trust anybody unless I've spoken to them eye to eye. <laughs> and even like a yeah. FaceTime can be a little bit troubling because I'm just like, uh, yeah, I it still require some because you could fake that in theory. Uh, but um, yeah, I, the fact that she didn't like ask for a FaceTime call just to confirm is very strange to me. And uh, yeah, I don't know. That's 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 weird. Uh, anyway, uh, final thoughts. There we are. I, I, I feel like we've addressed it. I don't want to keep stretching this out. I'm not trying to, but I saw a lot of reactions today and I wanted to do that thread. And then as it was all going down, we realized that we didn't really address the fact that she acknowledged she was a kid guys. Like this is weird. That's weird in itself. I don't believe it. I don't believe this for the record. If I did, I would back off. I don't believe this. And I've given her an opportunity to like confirm it. And if that is the case and I can confirm that, I will correct and back down. That's what I would, of course, I would I have no interest fighting with some kid uh, to do this. That's not what it is. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. Uh, I express my reasons why. The offer still stands. But if they want to prove this privately, I will let you guys know and I'll tell us all back down and it is what it is. Uh, however, that's not the intel that I have. It's not the intel I have. Uh, it's far more uh, egregious. And uh, still, you know, is there a connection to Shane PR is the real fair question that I'm kind of shocked Cat Ten Barge didn't do a little harder journalism on. As someone who like reports in this space, she's become one of the reporters of the Johnny Depp world. It's really kind of sad that she didn't like do a little bit more homework and just gave the benefit of the doubt to Shane Communications. I don't, Steph, how, how insane is that to you? Final thoughts. Totally insane. Uh, and it's, to me, the more insane thing um, that we really haven't actually touched upon is NBC News involved in all this. Yeah. Guess where those articles were published? NBC News. If I'm not mistaken, the peacock. Yeah. The peacock's in trouble, apparently, allegedly, maybe, you guys. Because guess what? Allegedly, it's a possibility that one of their journalists, allegedly, possibility, used a source as a little girl. As underage. An extremely a young little girl. <laughs> extremely young Extremely little girl young. By, Talk about uh, creepy. We're not Talk about words. creepy. I'm not, not even exaggerating. <laughs> extremely young. There you go, we didn't right? even have to be like flowery about it ourselves. Like there was no, no. adding to it, no sensationalism. It this is your it, source, cat. Okay, you gross. It. Where's, where's like in that regard, their whole approach to ensuring that a source who is allegedly a child is protected and not taken advantage of. Now, I'm not saying she was taken advantage of, I'm not saying she's a little child, I'm just saying in that potential hypothetical scenario right 
there's gotta be some protection for a source that is chi- that's a child, right? NBC News, I tell you something, if it be a gift, because I really don't believe it, but if it's true, Camilla's a child, NBC News, you might be in a spot of trouble. Oh, and, and, and you, you know might want to let go, Cat Cat 10 Bars. Just <laughs> Camilla, saying. Camilla, here's how we make a good. Camilla, I will forgive you. I think we all will if you sue NBC News and Cat 10 Barge for exploiting you as a minor. Because if you are indeed a minor, you have every right. You, you, They totally took advantage of you. Heck, you might make some money. I, I will apologize and I will support you in your endeavor to go after the media. We will protect your identity. I will happily help you do that, Camilla. I, you have my word. I am here live telling my audience now that would be a good way to get take the accountability and actually, you know, put it where it hurts. So Camila, please do the right thing because at the end of the day, well said, Steph, remind me, like there's two versions of this for Kat. There's two versions, right? She either is the young girl, right? Which I don't believe, but let's just, she either is the extremely young girl. This is her own word saying it online publicly. She either is an extremely young girl, which puts Kat in a bind or she's not. And then guess what she is guys? A liar. <laughs> A liar who doesn't have good credibility, who you just put in and said, Lara's the liar and she's not. So which is it, Kat? Is she telling the truth here or is she lying? Because now you're caught in a, you know, in a jar of pickles, aren't you? Which one are you going to try to lean with? I suspect they're going to go with the minor, right? Because that makes us look like we're scary adults going after kids. Uh, I, I suspect that's where they're going to try to go to, but I'm not going to let them do that. That's, that's nonsense. Uh, either way, Kat's in trouble. Uh, right? Is there any other? Is there any other scenario I'm not thinking about? She's either a minor or she's a liar. No. Good luck, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. No one. No wonder she tanks her account so often. You know what I mean? Because she she has to because she doesn't want this evidence and then it's there. But here, one other thing I'm going to say, and, and, I, and I I firmly believe this. Anybody who amasses 20,000 subscribers on a social media site on their own, anybody who does that is going to be proud of that achievement. You do not just turn it off and walk away without a serious reason. You just don't. There is a part of you as a creator. You're looking at us. There's no way any of us would just tank a 20,000 followed channel without a serious legal reason or something to do it. It's just absurd. Imagine amassing 20,000 clout followers. on. on a, that's what everybody in the world wants. But whether they admit it or not, most of them do if they're online talking things. Imagine earning it, getting there, and then just having no disregard for it and just flipping it on and off when you want. To me, that speaks of someone who clearly isn't actually, you know, doesn't need it, who works probably at someone like NBC or somewhere else, right? It just speaks of someone who's working with somebody else who doesn't require that. Why would you do it then? Why would you do it? Do you know what I mean, guys? Can you imagine just flipping off an account that has 20,000, 40,000, whatever it was, followers and just be like, eh, I don't care. Oh, maybe I still have it. Maybe I don't. Doesn't that seem fishy to you? More than fishy, it's a tactic. It's a complete tactic. It's either um, the heat's too much, so they go away for a little while, let it die down, and then they come back. Or you've got close to the truth. Mm -hmm. Go away, regroup, and then come back for a fresh tactic, fresh attack, this, that, and the other. Because you're right. Anyone who's anyone that's online, uh, that has a Twitter account, Instagram or whatever, and they're using it, what, what not. Damn, to go from zero to 20K in like a month or what not would be anyone's dream. Damn, it'd be my dream. I'm not, I'm going to keep it 100, right? I'd, I'd be like, hell yeah, thank you very much. By the way, at Steph Alton Nerd, Twitter, if you don't mind. Uh, <laughs> well, might as well get it in there while she's Check out about all it. of our link trees for all of our socials. Yes. <laughs> They're in my link tree now, guys. Go to my well. link tree. At the, in my link tree, you will now see at the bottom of my link tree, their link trees are there at the bottom, so you can Aww. find us all easily. Dear. I've been meaning to do that. Oh, I finally so was sweet. editing and it happened. Baby. Of course, yeah. That, it's one-stop shop now. Goodness. I've got to do it for you guys. I didn't know we could do that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll do it for mine. Anyways, I digress. Uh, so yeah, zero to 20K in like a couple of months. Hell yeah. Anyone who's anyone that's a Twitter user, Instagram user would jump, jump for those kind of numbers. And anyone that says they wouldn't, guess what? Lying. 
lying. Um, so yeah, her all of a sudden just switching it off like a tap and then switching it back on. To me, I, I think it's it's not a real Twitter user that's using it for normal Twitter purposes. It's me. It's more a nefarious kind of use of this Twitter account, in my opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever, that's used as a PR tool, that's used as a weapon in this war, not for normal Twitter kind of usage, if that makes sense. I agree. And I, I just want to end with uh, what we're going to keep talking about. I want to get to the, uh, <laughs> Dan Wooten, who's the one who called uh, Johnny a WB. We got lots to go through. You're not going to miss that story. But before I clip this, I do want to say I feel confident someone right now is watching this video, someone involved in this story who knows more than they're leading on. And I implore to you, do the right thing. Adjust this. Fix this. You can still you can still do the right thing. It's not too late. Take some accountability or expose the thing that's wrong. Do it. You'll be a hero. The truth always will set you free. It'll lift you up. Please Whoever is watching this, and I know someone is, I know someone is, do the right thing. Please, begging you. Let's get to the bottom of this and end this stupid toxicity. And also, make sure you go subscribe to Steph the Alter Nerd and It's Kim, both of which you can find their link trees on the bottom of my link tree, because, and along with Lewis. Uh, so that way, all you got to do is go to link tree when you're on Popcorn Planet, and it's all there for you. And that link tree link is pinned to the comments well, there you have it. Another fantastic show here on Popcorn Planet. It got wild. Nate, the lawyer, showed up. He just, uh, I don't know where he went, but he was there. And he just dropped some more tea on Cat. So if you want to watch the full stream, make sure you hit that join button. Pick a tier, uh, pick a level, hit the join, and then watch the replays whenever you want. And this was a fun one. We had a lot of fun in the stream. Thank you, Nate. There he is. Thank you, Nate, the lawyer. Thank you, Steph, the alter nerd. Thank you, it's Kim. And thank you, Lewis Leckover, Nerd Report. Lewis is live. We're going to send you guys over there with the redirect. If you're watching on the replay, check out these guys, or Lewis, or any of these, or all these videos that are going to pop up right here. Enjoy your night, everybody. We will see you again live tomorrow here on Popcorn Planet. And I'm not doxing anybody. My God, these people are crazy. <laughs>